Hello everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Inspire Me. Today we have the founder CEO of a glamorous brand, the Sherry Lua, and she is Pilini Adipola. And we are about to get into an exciting conversation with her to find out what her story is and what her advice and wisdom is to the upcoming female entrepreneurs. Hi Pilini, how are you? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, so, Pirini, first of all, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Uh, you are a person with a very busy schedule, but still you have managed to find time uh, for the uh, future female entrepreneurs. So, thank you for that. Uh, so, Pirini, how do you define yourself? Are you a person who wanted to start something on your own since childhood? Or did this idea cross your mind randomly when you were an adult? Let's discuss that. So, if I define myself, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like a just do it girl. Uh, if I start something, I would be, I would not stop until I'm done with it. Like, uh, but I, in my small days, this is not a dream which I was dreaming from my small days. I actually, like the majority of people around Sri Lanka, I wanted to be a doctor. So I did my whole world's A levels accordingly during maths and bio. But then when you come to a mature age, you realize that I'm, I was never a studious person. So you, I realized that medicine is not for me. So then I moved to the customer service job after I was done with my A-levels to get some pocket money. Okay. And then uh, while doing my IT qualification. So then after some time doing two to three years of job life, the nine to five juggling life, only I realized, okay, I want to do something on my own and that's how it all started. Alright, she started with the dream of becoming a doctor, but she realized that her strengths are elsewhere, uh, supporting creativity. So that's how she gave birth to Sherry Lua. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, the outset of your venture. This would be very uh, appealing information for the audience out there. So would you like to talk about how you set set it up, uh, Pilini? What were the, uh, let's talk about the daily steps. Uh, when you wanted to start Shell uh, what are the initial steps you took, how you found support in terms of material to supplies to all of that. More importantly about funding, a lot of people uh, who watch our segments uh, tend to ask us, uh, could you please ask about how these entrepreneurs find funding uh, for the business, either you know, a massive capital required for this. Let's talk about this. So as I said, uh, when I was doing the job for like two to three years, I realized like nine to five is a very we work in a ruling world yes. where we need to work on to someone else. So I was like, why not start something on my own, make my own rules, think out of the box, and then do something on my own, like work double harder than the what we do for our job. Yes. So that's how we I started. So I was coming to my uh, now husband. And telling all the I was tired all the time with the traveling, with the work and all the time. So he was like always motivating. He's like the backbone of Sherry Lua. So he was the he was the main reason I started Sherry Lua because his motivation was what initiated this whole brand. So I was telling him all the tiredness and okay, I'm done with this and all the ruling and all the stuff. He's me to someone else. And then only he was like, Okay, we'll do it. And then within a week. Within a week, we created the brand Sherry Lua. We came up with the name. Okay. We came up with the what we had to do because I always had a fashion sense. All the color matching and all the stuff coming into it. So I was always into clothing and I never found my size. So that was <laughs> like one reason where I, I we started with the clothing brand. Okay. So then we went to PETA, searched all the materials, found the fitting person. Within just one to one and a half weeks, we start, started Cherry Lua without just thinking. That's what I said in the beginning that I'm a just do it girl. Okay. Both of me and my husband, so we just did it. We just okay. went there, put some leaves on the job and then worked hard for it, for this. So found everything now, created FB page, created an Instagram page. And then did everything, made my own designs, have had some research and all. And then came up with everything, all the initial, I had six initial designs. And then went to Peta like 
10 to 20 times to come. That was for footwear, jewelry, or clothes? First, we started with clothes. Clothes, okay, yes. In 2017, okay, to be exact. So, 2017 December, we started Shelley work. December. So, we found all the fabrics went to like 10, 10 to 20 times to Peta, and then initially the six design came to life, and then only I started like, okay, this is my baby, and this is happening. Okay. Then only you realize that okay, this is it works. It, yeah, okay. it works. And then we put the image on Instagram, taking pictures. My husband took pictures. So we initially didn't have, we didn't have to spend much of a capital. We were like very keen on the capital investment because okay. we don't know where this will go. Okay. Like initially, because uh, those days online stores were like initial step baby okay. baby steps. So it was not booming like it is now. People didn't have the trust like it is now. Purchase via online platform. Yes. yes. You have to build the trust. So it's like very baby steps. You have to build the trust to the customer base that we are we want be juggling with your money. Yeah, yeah, right. We have to be a trustful online platform. That was my key. So the capital in, in the sense I actually Spend 10 to 20, 15 to 20 percent of my salary okay. into the business. Because okay. initially I didn't want to ask something, uh, ask money from anyone outside my circle. Okay. Like me and my husband and all the outside circle, I wanted to do this on my own. Like find my own capital and work with, work initially with everything. Okay. Like that's how we started. A lot of consistency, determination and passion uh, towards what you want to do is uh, truly uh, coming out of Tilini from what she uh, talks. So she started with a clothing brand which she realized uh, is not her baby, is not her cup of tea and she shifted into a, a different uh, line of business in a flash which is footwear and jewellery. And today, uh, she is as vibrant as her brand. She is very happy about it. And her success is right in front of her right now. The unique and the beautiful uh, footwear designs that you have done yourself, as uh, well as the jewelry which you will uh, see in the Instagram uh, photo stream of Inspire Me. And uh, of course, you can place your orders as well. So we will uh, let you know about that uh, during the uh, conclusion of the segment. So we are in conversation with Tilini Adipola, uh, the founder CEO of Sherry Lua, the footwear and the jewelry brand. We had some interesting uh, conversations around your support system, Tilini, and how you started the business, the sort of uh, baby steps you took at the outset. Let's talk about the uh, challenges. I'm sure you might have gone through some daunting odds to uh, you know, secure your place in the uh, space that you are operating in. So let's talk about the challenges and most importantly how you succumb to the pressure. So challenges are not happening only at the outset, it's an ongoing journey. Let's talk about that. When it comes to challenges, uh, I had a lot of challenges like everyone who is starting a business. Like the initial, when you are starting an online brand, you have to build this trust among the, among the customers. Uh, when it comes to jewellery, you need to make sure that the people trust the quality, mm. yeah, the customer service you give. So, I have five years experience in customer service. That has... Uh, that big, must have tremendously helped you. Yes. Yeah. It's a huge impact on my part because when I was working, I realized that customer is key. So, I actually give 90% of the priority to my customer. So without them, I wouldn't be here. So I give an amazing service to the customer. Even if it is after sales, I do give an amazing service. So even though you spend like, you, it is like one year you took a product from me, even after one year, I would be this, I would give the same service to them. Because that's how I build my brand, the trust and all the stuff, because I actually, Trusting customer service more. Yeah. So it was baby steps in creating this. Uh, so it is, it is slow in the beginning when you are trying to create a 
that create the grand design and see if the cast name would come to jewelry. To craft, of course, it's a bit easier than jewelry because jewelry is a bit of a high end product selling system. And technical too. Yes, technical too. And then, um, so when it comes to telling the customers like how to care for the jewelry and uh, that we value, it is valued to your money. And then even if it is after sales service, if something happens, we do always be there. That is the hardest part. Okay. Right? Uh, we need that trust. Yes, we need their trust. So I still win their trust. I'm still trying to win everyone's trust. So that's how I, I would never stop working towards customer service, even though this becomes a huge brand later. Right? We are still in the beginning stages. We have come a long way and I have a very long way to go. So customer service key is key to me. And then the next part is the designs and the quality and maintaining the quality and all those things. That is a definite challenge, how you're going to maintain consistency. Yeah, so how do you manage that in me? Uh, I'm always a trending person. Okay. So I am always in touch with the new designing trends. And then I most of the times I do customize the jewelry stuff. So if a customer wants to customize, we all do have that craving to sub. If you see something, we have the yeah. craving, okay, I need to make it. Yeah. yeah. So I I want it to be the brand where I make the dream come true. Yeah. So I mostly do the customization. And then also I do my own designs and all, choosing those stones, word stones, and then working with those energies and all those stuff. Yeah. When it comes to some precious stones, it's okay. a full of energy. Yeah. So working with them. When it comes to shoes and all, same. Working with the trend and then putting in the comfortability as well when it comes to the fashion. So if you are with the fashion trends going and then uh, in the market and all, you tend to realize after right, it will be a bit easier for you to get. Then it will come to you. It is in my body now. Yeah, okay. Or the fashion sense and all it comes to you when it when you do it for a when long you time. keep doing it for long yes. and longer and when you invest yourself in it, you know that becomes a part of your that DNA. It's actually a habit. Yeah. Okay. You buy habit every day for like three to four hours. I just scroll around the internet finding trends, okay. new trends, what can I input into this? What what are the new technologies that is uh, to be included in this. So those are all the learning curves. So really, let's talk about the uh, qualities an entrepreneur should have and what they should let go of. So you talked about the technical uh, side of knowledge or the skill areas that you have you developed uh, pertaining to your business. So anyone out there who wants to start a similar uh, business uh, needs to be thorough with uh, such things, such technicalities. But besides that, as a person, what are the other qualities that you have developed in yourself which help you to uh, bring Sherry world to what it is today? And of course, the qualities that you have let go So, being an entrepreneur, at the initial stage and until you come to a certain point, it's actually hard work. You have to work hard. You have to keep on pushing and pointing towards that dream. That even though it fails, you have to like uh, push towards that dream. Okay, I have a dream. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. You have to keep on telling you that this is my dream. This is my baby. I have to keep on doing this. Right? In the beginning. So then when it comes, when you like work hard and come to that point, you realize when you when you are close to that top level, you, the sense of achievement you make it it motivates you to go forward, right? And being an uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, you realize to value the time and to be efficient. You have to be efficient. You have you will have to juggle ten to fifteen works at once and ten to fifteen deadlines at once. So you have to manage time and uh, so you have to learn, it is actually a learning curve towards the end. You have to keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on doing. 
So, uh, being an entrepreneur, you have to keep your mind on the dream, on the end goal. Then only it will be a successful venture and a thrilling venture. You have to love what you do. That's the main part. You have to love what you are doing. And if you love what you are doing and love the love every perk comes along the way, you will love the journey. Like every day would be a, a thrilling experience, an adventure for you. As you love the journey, you have you should love the products you create. You should love the people who is surrounded in making the products. You have to respect everyone. You have to respect your customers. You have to respect everyone, even though there would be so many harder times. Like you feel like okay, I'm done with this. But then you have to like work on your work on your uh, things to like come to the part that okay, I love. But I when you I think when you reach that point, what you have to think about is the perks that yes. you will one day get. From yes. your venture, you know, that will like you quite correctly said it will keep pushing you. Yes, it will keep pushing you, it will be harder when you are like uh, going to the top. It is an entrepreneur life is always going to the top. Yeah. So it is it is like creating stuff, inventing stuff, making more quality stuff, adding everything on the way. Yeah. It is like a recipe you create till you die. Yeah, true. That's what I believe. So you so come up with a little thing, then you add on, add on, add, add on, on, and, add on yeah. and then go on. Yeah. True. So then only the thrilling comes. So if you stop inventing, yeah. it will be the end of entrepreneur life. So that should not be. Yeah. So uh, if you have yet reached that word, I think yeah, it's all the words and all. True. It's a really good book which you learn everything about. So, I used to read a lot of those okay. to get motivation into starting a brand. So, you have to invest your time into getting knowledge yeah. around the brand you create. It's not just creating a brand, but then it's about learning everything which is there around it, around the brand. Like, what you need to do, what are the hard parts, or how can you overcome anything. So, you have to always be learning. Sure. You have to love learning. Like, if you love the brand, if you love the products you create, you will keep on doing what you love. Exactly. So, having the passion and love for what you do is the first piece of your uh, you know of your journey or the first step of your journey that gets you to do the rest of it so if you truly and you know honestly love what you are doing it will keep you pushing to do the rest of the things and uh, like Hirini quite correctly said learning uh, unlearning relearning and upgrading yourself in terms of the trends that is associated with your venture certainly helps you to stay up to date in what you are doing. Clearly, last but not least, I would like to ask this. You are coming from a corporate, you came from a corporate background. You had certain, you faced certain challenges, daily masks, that's why you did this shift. And shifting from a corporate job, a steady paycheck to an entrepreneurship is a definite, you know, it's a transformative 360 degree sort of a change. And it's definitely getting out of your comfort zone. How can someone make up their mind to make this shift and get out of the comfort zone? Let's do some of that. Uh, I did my job for like one year since I started from 2017. I left my job in 2018 December. So for like one year, I kept on managing you are juggling both things. Yes, juggling both the things. Because until you come to a point where you reach the financial freedom, you have to keep on getting the paycheck. Right? So, uh, you have to have a massive help as well. Because my husband actually really, like I said, he was a backbone. While I was doing the job, he was handling most of the parts of steady work. And... You, when you come to a point that you can't do the job 
with the business, you can't cope them both, then only I left it off. And, uh, but then you need to have a fallback plan in terms of finance, you know, you have to be comfortable in terms of finances as well. Yes, you have to be comfortable in finances. When I left the job, I was very comfortable with my venture. I was very comfortable with the Futra brand. It was a it was eight months towards the line, pure brand about eight to nine months towards the brand. So I was very happy with what I found. Then I was very happy with the cash flow. Then only I stopped. But as soon as you stop, you get this uh, <laughs> very butterfly feeling that okay, okay <laughs> and now you get scared. Okay. That is the point where you get scared because okay. your steady paycheck would stop. So, true. Uh, then, at the same time, you get this motivation, the drive, this whole drive to go forward. Now I can't stop. Yeah, yeah. I can never stop now. I have to do this. And you get extra time also. Yes. You know, to invest more. Yes. I never, I had a very limited time. I used to go for the job around 7 in the morning. Go for the 9 to 5 job. And when I'm coming, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. Like, oh, by yeah. 5 with the traffic and all the time. So, at night, uh, up to like 2 to 3 in the morning, I used to do this stuff. Message and all the stuff. From the beginning, I actually messaged my own. So my husband would skip around his work and then do the deliveries okay. and then uh, he found the delivery partner and all those things came into the first place. And then it was very hard in the beginning. It was very hard uh, to juggle two jobs okay. at once and then work the personal life and work life balance and the personal life as well because you have to have time to yourself as well. Yeah. It is actually very hard juggling the job and the business but if you, like I said, if you love it, if you are done with the rules, working towards someone, yeah. it was never for me. I I hated, uh, I hated working to someone else to be truthful. Yeah. I hated asking for leave when I wanted and giving reasons to them. <laughs> That is a and proving the reason. <laughs> yes. So I well, it is actually a freedom. When you yeah. stop the job and working towards all your capacity to something you really love, it's freedom. Yeah. I love that freedom. I wanted to dwell on freedom. And then I worked hard, I never stopped. Like all the free time I included into this. And then I actually really had time for myself. Yeah. I had time to, I it was my own time in schedule. Yeah. So if, if it is a priority, I would set my schedule according to that. I would work hard until 2 to 3 in the morning, but then that's fine. Yeah. I would set my priorities right. So uh, I would be, I was happy. Uh, towards like 2 to 3 months, I was really happy with the freedom I got. Yeah. So if you don't have to travel. Yeah. Like two hours to three hours every day. That traveling time I had at home, I can spend with time with my family and all. Ladies, uh, shifting from your steady paycheck to your own venture, to your own baby is a definite risk. But keep doing it. Uh, that's what Tidini's message is because you need to have the financial stability, a comfort zone in terms of finance if you want to get or stand on your own feet. So while gaining your experience, you can plan the baby steps of your venture and when you are 100% or absolutely stable and comfortable in terms of finance, you can you know, make that shift by reaching from your corporate job to this. So at no point we are trying to say that corporate job is not something that someone should pursue. Of course, we all do that. I do that. They did it. And that is how we learned multiple things around customer service. That's uh, from my corporate job. I have learned how to become a spokesperson, how to be in front of camera, how to speak uh, confidently. Those are the skills that I have personally gained. So at no point we are criticizing the corporate world or the jobs that we have done. We are so grateful to what our workplaces have taught us. And uh, thanks to that knowledge only, we are today on our own uh, doing uh, this sort of valuable brands and 
uh, services like one in Inspire Me Delivers. So we were in conversation with Pilini Adipola, the founder CEO of Sherry Lure, the glamorous, glorious footwear and jewelry brand in Colombo. But she is uh, working so hard uh, to make her presence and her expansions globally uh, while her clientele is, is already established in Sri Lanka. So we have to bring the show to a close now. Uh, Pirini, thank you so much for making uh, your making uh, your schedule free uh, for us to share your story and your advice with the uh, upcoming entrepreneurs. Uh, so also uh, we would like to uh, mention about Pirini's uh, collection of footwear and her jewelry. Follow Sherry Lua on Facebook and Instagram. The handle will be mentioned at the bottom of the video as well as in the description. And you can reach out to Pirini, like she said, to place your customized orders for jewelry with uh, semi precious stones, with the uh, semi precious stones, and as well as the footwear. Also, follow Inspire Me on Facebook and Instagram at inspireme.silon. You are watching the Inspire Me YouTube channel, uh, the stepping stone uh, to the future female entrepreneurs. So uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel of Inspire Me and click on the bell icon as well. So every time we bring an interesting episode like what we had with Pirin today, you will be notified then and there. A big shout out to all the female entrepreneurs out there who are on a daily hustle uh, to convert their bright business idea into a successful venture like Sherry Lua has done, like Pirini has done. So all the best and stay in touch. We will be bringing in another interesting episode very soon to you. Thank you so much. Bye.